Hey Ken folks, so this episode is all about how to make a protest shield. So I've been LARPing for roughly 30 years and I know what materials will work. And I've been seeing this meme or this um, photo of how to make a LARP safe shield for a protest and it just won't work. A plastic tote lid is not gonna work. That thing's gonna crack and break on you, especially when say, you know, 250 pound police officer right control guy with a baton hits it it's gonna break and it's not gonna really protect you that well and um, you won't be able to use it for another protest and also it's not really gonna block any rubber bullets or any gas canisters so what uh, is this will and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it how to hang it off your shoulder so it's not so hard on your arm to carry this around and it hangs it in the right good passive position to where it'll protect most of your head and uh, you can just keep your eyes open. You can keep your eye on whoever's out there. If they're gonna raise a weapon, you can just shrug your shoulder and you're in a defensive position. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you where to get this stuff, how much it's gonna cost, and all of that good stuff. So hey, if this episode was or is gonna be helpful for you, and if, if you liked it at all, then hit that like button. Smash that like and that subscribe and all that good stuff. And be sure to share this. Make sure you get the word out that this will help you and you can write a good message on it and it's not going to fall apart on you and you can use it for protest after protest after protest a cardboard sign will fall apart after you after a while this won't this will handle years and years and years of abuse so stay tuned Um, you're gonna need some supplies obviously so I'm gonna let you I'm gonna give you the list of everything you can get and where to get it and how much it's gonna cost so um, I actually just got a big 4 by 8 sheet of plywood but you can get these two foot by four foot sheets for hold on, just over 10 bucks a piece so 1095 a piece okay you're gonna need garage door handles all right um, come with its own mounting hardware and uh, you can definitely uh, pick this up for $4.98 so you get two of them um, and you don't want the other one to go to waste so that's why you buy another plywood sheet, sheet for this sort of thing so these little velcro straps are, are soft and elastic and uh, they're made for boards but they're just really comfortable for the arm and they they're just really nice um, I wore the shield last Saturday for three hours and it, my arm felt fine. Okay, so in order for these bolts not to slip through that handle, you're going to need some washers. Some little washers for the bolts so they don't, you know, wear through the wood or wear through the handle. You're going to need luggage straps. So uh, luggage straps are really, really helpful for... Um, uh, hanging the shield on your shoulders and not so much on your arm so it distributes the weight more evenly and uh, I've seen these at Beacolin and it's a really really good idea because some of those fights last for hours and these fights could last for hours as well and you don't want to wear yourself out you want to keep as much energy as you possibly can what else you're gonna need camp pad so a little foam pad for the arm where your arm is strapped into the wood and because eventually that um that wood's going to really start wearing on especially the bony parts of your arms elbow and things like that and if there's any impact that's hitting the shield that's going to go straight into your arm and that's not going to feel comfortable so this helps out a lot you need a furring strip so furring strips you can go to like lowe's or home depot for all of this stuff and a furring strip is really just a an inch and a half wide by three quarter inch thick and you get a six foot or eight foot lengths and uh, you're not going to use it all but it's going to be really helpful for bringing the uh, door handle away from the board so you can your hand can actually slip underneath it you'll see a little later on if you want to write a message you can do it with a paint pen this is non-toxic acrylic um, and you can write on there and it's nice clean lettering you can also use a spray paint can but I'm not good with spray paint and I'm good with, I'm much better with a pen. This could have been a little bit better, but you know what, for $11, it's not a bad deal. So you're gonna need some sort of measuring instrument, preferably a yardstick, something like that. You're gonna need a pencil to make markings on. You're gonna need a drill. 
So duct tape is optional, but I think it's extremely useful because some of these edges are really sharp and you don't want people brushing up against you getting splinters and getting cut up. You know, it's not likely they'll get cut, but you know, a little bit of duct tape is real cheap. This thing's usually four or five dollars a piece. So get that. So also you're gonna need a jigsaw. You could get away with um, a fatter drill bit, but uh, I don't think it'll work out nearly as well, but this will work just as good. And uh, so there you go. That's basically it. This is a very, very simple build. You can get this done in roughly an hour. Um, much less if you're much more capable and you, you're just uh, making a whole bunch of these for the whole crew. So yeah, let's get started. Also, hearing protection. Make sure you grab that because we're gonna make a bit of a noise with the uh, jigsaw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off these edges here because they're a bit sharp and I don't want somebody to run across it and get hit with a corner. And uh, we wanna make sure that this is purely defensive. We don't have some cop going off the deep end and getting all frisky because you got something sharp on you. So yeah, well, let's get rid of those and uh, make sure the people around you also don't get hurt. So yeah, let's get that started. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to measure um, 21 inches from each end on four sides. So 21 inches, and a line. And again, we're making this fast. It doesn't need to be super engineered and accurate. Now that you have all four of those lines, you want to connect. So this is exactly where your arm is going to go. All right, so just like that. So it should accommodate all you big boys out there with some big old meaty arms. Now you got these lines in, you wanna go four inches in from the edge here. Four inches in the end here. And this is where your handle's gonna be. And then you wanna go nine inches. And that's where your elbow strap. So it's gonna be like this. So once you're done with your measurements, you can actually start drilling and cutting. Okay. So make sure you got your holes in the right spacing because you could be off by like a quarter inch and getting those bolts to line up, it'll be a pain in the butt. So basically line the edge of the handle Right, and try and center it as best you can here. So that's what it should look like right there. Make sure you keep your hardware and stuff in the same box so you don't lose it. By the way, this is a quarter inch bit. I forgot to mention that. Because um, those bolts are quarter inch wide and that's a perfect fit for that hole. So make sure you drill these at quarter inch. So the next one we're gonna do is 3 8 inch for the uh, arm straps. Okay, now that you have your holes drilled, you want to go about an inch towards the handle here. You want to cut out a little keyhole looking thing and that's where your straps gonna go through now this is where that furring strip comes in okay so I had this isn't a furring strip this is just a piece of wood that I've had sitting around for ages and uh, this is gonna space your arm in between your arm 
and, or excuse me, this is gonna space between the shield and the actual handle. So otherwise your hand's not gonna fit underneath that handle. So we're gonna cut these down here. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be pretty, just fast. You don't wanna waste a whole lot of time and money on something that could get confiscated or could get torn up and just a single altercation. So here we go. So you got your two little spacer pieces here and they don't have to be accurate, they just have to be thick. That's, that's the only real requirement. And we're gonna drill some holes through this for the bolts to go through. Now I use the other side of the, um, the furring strip just as a backer so I don't drill through my, um, my plywood there. I don't wanna weaken it. And uh, once you have it through, you can wallow it out. Make, a, make that bolt get through there a bit more easily. Otherwise, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Now it's time to put on the hardware. Like that. Also notice that there's a little square bit and that little square bit right below the head, that's gonna embed itself on the other side of the wood and that's gonna keep it from uh, unscrewing. So that's where you put the spacers. All right, sorry, the uh, washers, because that bolt or that, that nut, get off of there, stop it, could go work its way through that hole and you don't want that. That's what the washer's there for. So yeah, and again, like uh, you can get your hand underneath it now, um, especially with the foam padding on the other side, but before you couldn't because there would be too much space in between your, you know, there, there wouldn't be enough space for your hand to fit underneath there. So that's why you need that. Now you could put another lock washer or lock nut on here to keep it from coming loose. Um, that's for really, really long-term um, applications. So, um, and again, I didn't go that route. These, I'm kind of trying to keep this as low budget as possible. Lock washers really don't cost that much, but you get the idea. I'm not trying to make this complicated. Trying to get it on there fast and keep moving, keep making these, keep marching, keep holding people accountable for bad behavior. So, and again, you can use a crescent wrench here or you can use a pair of pliers. I'm not looking to make this pretty. Um, this is pretty much just going on and staying on. I'm not planning on cutting this off or taking this back off at any time soon. Since you already made that six inch spacer, you just wanna measure out, mark where you wanna cut. And you can use scissors or a razor knife. I'm not sure if that got recorded at all, but you wanna hot glue it on here. And so you wanna hot glue it in the middle and you wanna hot glue it around the edges to make sure this thing does not peel up and doesn't come up off on you. Velcro strap here. And you wanna make sure, you take your prickly side and make sure it's on the outside. So if you're going this way or this way, you wanna make sure it's on the outside of the arm rest. And that's how you're gonna get this to work. Now, depending on how big your arm is, will determine, and again, you want this all the way down. Make sure that you don't cut this hole too big because you don't want that little strap kind of going through. Not a big deal, but you just need a little bit. Now, you, this could be good enough if you've got, you know, tree trunk for a forearm, but I don't. I got these skinny little bird arms. They're strong, but they're thin. So going two times around, is just as useful. And a little Velcro, boom, done. Now, if you have like a medium size arm, you can just use one of the loops, but if you have a skinny arm, you can use just one. And you can tighten this thing down 
um, by just cinching it down more. So you can adjust it to your size. So there's splinters and some uh, rough edges here and we want to make sure that we tape these up. Also these bolts will stick up and they will cut you or somebody else rubbing up against you. So make sure that you have those covered up. Take a little piece like this. And you want to have a little bit of flag and then you bend it over like that. Take another piece and just tape over it. Okay, so last step. The last step. And then you're ready for your shield. Now this, again, this is optional, but it's so useful it's almost necessary. You can adjust it however you want. Uh, you're gonna do any final adjustments once you put this on. Now you got, now this is uh, a righty or a lefty, right? So I can put my left arm in here or if my more right-handed, I can put my right in, and it's the same height. That's why you put it in the middle. But, say if you're putting your uh, message on there, make sure you have the right side up. Otherwise, you're gonna be writing on there and it's not gonna make sense because it's gonna be upside down. If you're gonna be using your right, you wanna put your right arm in like that, and you're on the shoulder. You want your elbow sticking out like this. So and it should kind of come in at an angle like so. And then like this. So say you need to use both hands. You can just pull your arm out, swim around, push it behind you. Now your back is covered. So you can kneel down to pick somebody up and they could be throwing stuff at you, they can be hitting you, and it's gonna be a lot harder. You're gonna be a harder target to hit. And say, what if somebody were to grab the shield or, you know, you can't get it away, you just pull your arm out, that's it. Push the shield near their feet, and then you could, that'll probably get them to stumble, and then you can get out of there. It'll buy you some time. So all of this is really easy. You can just whip your arm out, take that, um, that shoulder strap out, so you wanna, that kind of motion and this whole thing comes loose and you can bolt you can get out of there just like that super easy and i can adjust the height of this as i see fit so if i want it to sit a little lower i just loosen the strap if i want to sit a little higher i can but this is a really good height as long as it covers right about your cheek and your eyes are open so you can see it doesn't um, expose too much of your head, but it does a little bit. So the other thing is um, the handle's pretty close to the edge here, so I can kind of look very easy. I can just shrug my shoulder and my eyes are covered, right? If this handle were further back, it would be much harder. I'd have to use more motion to get my head out from underneath or from behind the shield. So that's generally the design of how I made this and how I think this would be a great design for you guys out there to protect yourselves, keep yourselves safe from uh, overzealous police officers. Okay, so and again, when you want to put your message on, make sure you have the right side facing up. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna put my left arm in here. And so yeah, that's facing the right way. That's the right side up. And so now I can write my message on there. So that's the shield in a nutshell. And that's the easiest, cheapest, and fastest way that you can make a shield to uh, protect yourselves on the front lines of these protests and, and start demanding some more police accountability. So, and again, make sure you share this and we can get some good information out there on how to protect yourselves during these, these very difficult times. Yes, it's gonna be heavy and not everybody has, has to or can, but you know what? You can definitely um, hand this off to somebody or make this for somebody that can handle it and is big enough to handle that sort of thing. So if you guys really appreciated this episode, then consider buying me a coffee on my Ko-Fi. So my Ko-Fi uh, has all sorts of options there. 
and you can you know give me more than just one cup of coffee and it goes a long way to helping to encourage me and give me the energy I need to keep making these videos. If you want to support me more in the long term, go to my Patreon and my Patreon has all sorts of benefits to it like early access to videos, uh, I'll personally mentor you, also if you want to get producer credit at the end or if you want to uh, get a uh, sponsored video, if you want me to talk about your products, your causes, your LARP, whatever. Um, you can definitely go there and check them out and get a video to be sponsored for your LARP or your whatever you want it to be. Um, also, um, if you just want to buy some cool merch, head on over to my Etsy. My Etsy has all sorts of really cool stuff. Like I've got mugs, I've got cutting boards, I've got um, what else? Uh, I've got chairs, I've got sea chests, I've got all sorts of cool stuff. You can get these cool t-shirts. So yeah, I would highly, highly go recommend you go over there and you get something out of it. I get something out of it. Everybody wins. So that's basically all I got for you for this uh, this episode, nerds. So I'm going to send you home with a be humble, be helpful, and be honorable. Thanks for watching.